The wasp's head keeps on munching, even after it's detached from its body. The fish clamps its jaws so tight they can't be opened, although it lost most of its body. A headless chicken carries on with life as if nothing's wrong. Check out this video showing animals with astonishing abilities, and make sure to watch it all the way to the end. A headless chicken has made headlines around the world because, well, you probably think it's the famous Mike the Headless Chicken who miraculously lived for 18 months despite being destined for the soup pot. No, this is an entirely different, more recent story. This headless bird was discovered in the Myang Ratchaburi district of Thailand, and the circumstances surrounding its decapitation are shrouded in mystery. Local folks speculate that it may have fallen prey to another animal, though it's puzzling why the predator didn't finish the job. Regardless, the bird found itself in good hands when a vet stepped in to care for it, feeding the chicken right through its neck and even administering antibiotics. Later, local monks adopted the headless chicken and even covered the vet's bills. Every once in a while, chickens manage to stay alive even after losing their heads due to their anatomy. It's a rare occurrence, but it happens more often in chickens compared to other animals. The reason behind this is the way their brains are situated inside their skulls. The part responsible for automatic functions like breathing is positioned in such a way that it can sometimes remain functional even without a head. That's what happened to our chicken. If the wound is treated with antibiotics, such a chicken can go on living a pretty good life. With just one catch, someone will have to feed it by hand using a dropper forever. Like many other people, you've probably heard the idea that ants can go about their ant business just fine without a head. Well, spoiler alert, that's a common myth. In reality, ants can't get by without their heads just like most other animals. Turns out the head is where all the crucial organs reside, like their brain, mouth parts, and sensory receptors required for essential ant functions. Indeed, when an ant loses its head, some parts of its body can still make reflex movements, yet this isn't a sign that the insect is feeling fine without its head, it's a result of the ant's decentralized nervous system. Nerve ganglia located all over the ant's body can carry on functioning, triggering reflexes without the brain's involvement. Yet, without its brain and essential organs, the ant can't manage simple tasks such as eating, drinking, or coordinating its movements. Eventually, it'll just meet its end. And even if some monks tried to look after it, the result probably wouldn't be any different. Cockroaches, on the other hand, are the ultimate survivors. You've probably heard the rumors that they can endure just about anything, even a nuclear war. Well, there's some truth to that statement. Cockroaches were actually spotted amidst the aftermath of the atomic bombings in Hiroshima and Nagasaki back in 1945. However, it's worth noting that humans were also found in those areas, and sadly, many of them died from radiation sickness. But here's the curious part. No one really kept tabs on how the cockroaches fared after the bombing. Understandably, there were more pressing concerns at the time. It wasn't until later that experiments revealed some cockroaches can withstand a radiation dose 10 times higher than what would be lethal for humans. But what about the head? Cockroaches actually can survive for weeks after losing their heads, and scientists prove that with alarming frequency. The trick behind this survival is that their blood clots at the neck. Plus, they've got a couple of nifty tricks from evolution. Cockroaches don't breathe through their brains, but use these tiny body openings called spiracles instead. That's why they can still breathe without their heads. Since they're cold-blooded, they don't need a lot of food and can sustain themselves for weeks on the food they got before losing their heads. On top of that, they have these ganglia scattered all over their bodies, which let them react to a scientist poking them with a pen. Sadly, cockroaches can still scuttle about even if they've lost their heads. Meanwhile, the head can keep on living for hours after it's been separated from the body. If you feed it the right nutrients, it can hang in there even longer. But it won't be quite the same without any signals from the body. The cold-blooded male garter snake is one tough survivor, too. This poor creature once had a run-in with a lawnmower that left him with a badly damaged face. He lost both eyes and ended up with a strange-looking stump instead of a head. But amazingly, he didn't let that stop him from carrying on, at least in captivity. Surviving in the wild in that condition would have been nearly impossible. 
The people who took care of him even gave him the nickname Nearly Headless Nick, a nod to a character from the Harry Potter series. How can you be nearly headless? Nick enjoyed a relatively happy life in captivity, although it was sadly cut short at just two years. Normally, snakes of his kind can live anywhere from three to ten years, but they usually have heads. It's important to note that Nick was already a grown-up snake when he got hurt, so he actually outlived many of his wild relatives. It's important to note that losing vision isn't a major issue for a snake. Nick might have been able to survive without human assistance by relying on his sense of smell to locate food, However, he would have faced numerous threats beyond just finding food, and that's where a headless snake would clearly have a tough time. And this is a sea wolf, or rather its head. Sea wolves belong to the group of ray finned fish that we like to reel in for a tasty dinner, and we even put their skin to use for leather. However, catching one of these fish is not an easy task. They'll put up a struggle even in the afterlife, even if you decide to chop off their heads. This fish keeps a set of sturdy teeth in its head featuring sharp conical ones in the front and large molar-like ones in the back. Even after it's gone belly up, these teeth can still pose a challenge when it comes to prying open its jaws. It's almost impossible, and if you get bitten, those teeth will really sink in deep. It's all thanks to what we call the biting reflex. If something gets in the mouth of this fish when it's on its last breath or already dead, those jaws will snap shut all by themselves. That's why fishermen often toss objects into the sea wolf's mouth to avoid a surprise bite with those mighty jaws. Cold-bloodedness is a factor, too. When the temperature drops, it gives tissues like the brain, nerves, and muscles a little more vitality before they call it quits from oxygen deprivation. So even if a fish is pretty much a goner and has no head, signals can still travel through its body. If you were to remove its heart and plop it into the right solution, that heart might keep on beating for about an hour. In a nutshell, it's like having an undead fish. And then Steve made an interesting point. It's not just ants and cockroaches that can keep moving after losing their heads. Turns out wasps and hornets have perfected this skill to the point where they can fly without their heads and carry their heads with them. Sure, they need to find their heads first, but they're pretty good at it. This unique ability comes from the wasp's distinct nervous system. As I mentioned earlier, unlike us, they have nerve clusters not only in their heads but also in other parts of their bodies. These clusters can keep the wasp alive for a while even after it seems certain they're as good as gone. There's actually evidence suggesting that the head and body of the wasp can move independently for up to 12 hours before the inevitable end. And considering that these insects can grab their heads and take off, it's almost like they know what's going on. Regardless, we do know that as long as the head remains intact, it keeps doing its job just like it did when it was connected to the body. You see, the head can't exactly turn around and check what's going on behind it, so it's quite likely that the little bug doesn't even realize its unfortunate fate until it's completely gone. Here's the interesting part. Wasps don't just use their heads to munch on food, they also produce hormones that signal their bodies it's mealtime. So the head keeps producing the hormones because it doesn't know that, well, there's nowhere for the food to go anymore. When there's a delicious food right in front of their mandibles, their heads instinctively start nibbling away, even if the food doesn't go any further than their heads. Those hormones don't take no for an answer. Unfortunately, creatures like wasps and other animals can't simply shed their bodies to grow new ones, but there is a creature that knows how to do it, and it's called a sea slug. It was a typical day in a Japanese lab when a researcher spotted something truly bizarre. A slug's head was moving around without the rest of its body, as if it were the most normal thing in the world. While some slug species can regrow non-essential body parts like legs or tails, witnessing an animal ditch its entire body along with important organs is exceptionally rare. Researchers have observed a fascinating phenomenon in slugs from the Elysia genus where these creatures perform an extreme form of self-amputation. They essentially discard their old bodies and then proceed to grow new ones. Surprisingly, they can pull off this remarkable feat multiple times during their lifetime. The entire process typically spans one to three weeks, but it's worth noting that the older the slug, the less effective its regenerative abilities become. Very elderly slugs, after shedding their old bodies, sometimes struggle to grow new ones and perish within 10 days, 
because they can't feed. Imagine being just ahead for an entire week and a half. Quite an impressive feat. Just like bugs and fish, snakes have a peculiar ability to retain their reflexes even after they've died. These reflexes happen because there are still some electrically charged particles in the snake's nerve cells for a few hours after its death. When the nerve of a recently deceased snake is stimulated, the channels in the nerve open up, allowing ions to pass through. It sparks a little electrical impulse that makes its muscles carry out reflexive actions, and in some cases, it might even give you a post-mortem bite. Yes, a dead snake will bite you if you get too close, but rest assured, the snake isn't getting any satisfaction from the act. You've already got the idea. Cold-blooded creatures don't have to produce their own warmth, so they don't consume as much oxygen, and they can keep moving on autopilot even if they run out of oxygen completely. In a nutshell, it's the same pattern. A lobster's body also moves after death, but the reason is unexpectedly different. When it dies, its muscles start to break down and release enzymes, which is quite similar to what happens in other creatures. As a result, the lobster's tail curls up under its body. This is a natural occurrence that happens in all animals after they've passed away. However, lobsters have a unique feature that sets them apart from some other animals, an exoskeleton. <laughs> The lobster's exoskeleton is made up of chitin, a strong and flexible material that provides support and protection. We've gone over the way exoskeletons work and how animals make use of them quite a few times. So even after the lobster dies, its tough outer shell made of chitin stays surprisingly sturdy, allowing it to flex and bend. At the same time, the muscles gradually break down. Eventually, you might even notice the tail twitching even though the lobster's no longer alive. This isn't the only instance of this happening. We've also heard tales of meat twitching on the shelves, and not just seafood, but beef. But how does that happen, considering cows are warm-blooded animals? Actually, these kinds of things are a sign that the meat is fresh. It might sound a bit strange, but those little muscle twitches indicate that the animal was recently butchered. So recently that the nerves in the muscles haven't had time to settle down. Even though the animal's main nervous system is out cold, the nerves and the muscles are still doing their thing, causing those movements. Eventually, the twitching stops. Some experts, though, have doubts about this. They say these movements can only happen within the first 90 seconds after the animal dies. But then I have no idea why meat on the counter can still wiggle. What do you think? Total Recall Recent experiments have revealed that flatworms can actually remember what they've learned even after losing their heads. These worms, just like some other species, can regenerate lost heads when all that's left is their bodies. But here's the kicker. These planarians can also hang on to their memories. To put it to the test, scientists taught these flatworms how to find food on a rough surface and then, quite literally, took their heads off. Two weeks later, after their heads grew back, these worms somehow managed to regain their skill of navigating rough terrain. It's like they remembered it. What about the humans? Talking about decapitating people can be quite unsettling. But here's a curious tale from 1793, when they executed the murderer of French politician Jean-Paul Marat. They say they lifted her head and gave her cheeks a good slap. Spectators swore they saw her face contort with anger and her cheeks even became flushed. There are other stories of severed heads that seemed oddly aware. You see, the brain and all its supporting parts need oxygen to keep going. Once the blood vessels in the neck rupture, the oxygen supply gets cut off. Whatever oxygen is left in the blood and tissues post-mortem will definitely get used up, but it won't stick around for long. Experts believe that you can only expect any movement to happen in parts of the body that are still connected to the head, like the muscles controlling the eyes or mouth. This might explain what people observed in 1793. As for the other accounts, they're likely more fiction than fact, because once a human head is detached from the body, it can only make a few fleeting movements. Tougher than cockroaches Remember we talked about cockroaches' legendary radiation resistance? Well, it seems they're not the ultimate survivors in that department. Researchers ran a series of experiments and found that not even the most resilient cockroaches could withstand exposure to 100,000 rads. Surprisingly, flower beetles were up to the challenge. 
A solid 10% of them managed to endure a whopping 100,000 rads for a full 30 days during the experiment, proving that they're even tougher than cockroaches. So if a nuclear catastrophe were to strike, it appears that flower beetles would be the ones left standing on the planet, along with a few tardigrades. Can't do without them. And the world will be a much better place. See you later.